Let's talk Champions Cup then. This is my preview of the tournament, which starts this weekend. And a lot of people have said in the comments, Tim, I want to see you covering a bit more club rugby. I love this club rugby competition. If you want to see more club rugby covered uh, on this channel, then get watching, get sharing, give the video a thumbs up, spread the word and uh, subscribe to the channel as well and get stuck in with your comments on what you make of it. I'm going to talk about the things I like about the Champions Cup, don't like so much, uh, the contenders, some of the key fixtures that are coming up. And I want to start, though, just by looking back down memory lane, because this is a competition that holds a very special place in my heart. I have great memories. Some of the games that I grew up watching, I think back to 2004, and it was Wasps winning at the death against Toulouse. Clement Poitrano just trying to shepherd the ball out into touch, but it bobbles back infield. And before Clement Poitrano can realise what's going on, Rob Howley has touched the ball down and scored. Awesome moment. 2006, another standout moment. Peter Stringer scoring there, Munster getting a win, and it meant all the more to Munster because of the, the defeats in finals they'd had in, what, 2000 and 2002? Uh, in particular, the one where Neil Back from Leicester um, scooped the ball back in the scrum. There were no TMOs at that point, so the hand of Back handed uh, the, the tournament to Leicester. Um, there was 2011 when the other big Irish province, Leinster, won an incredible fashion. They, they had an amazing comeback, 16 points down at half-time to Northampton. Johnny Sexton, two tries, led an amazing comeback. I think it was like 33-22 that finished. One of the best finals you'll see. Uh, Toulon, three in a row. Johnny Wilkinson signing off on British soil with a win at Twickenham for Toulon. Uh, that team of Galacticos, absolute superstars. And what a side they were. There was, I mean, this is not a final, but this is just one of my memories. 25-24 to Wasps in a quarter final against Exeter at the Rico Arena. It's so sad looking at this, talking about Wasps. They, they don't even exist right now. Um, but this was the first game that I worked on the Champions Cup for BT Sport. The first season I was doing work for them. So I, I, I remember just, I, I actually texted my mum when I was on the dining bus working for BT Sport going, I'm sat next to Brian O'Driscoll and Lawrence Delelio. It was all very new then. It was wild, but what a game. Jimmy Gopeth with a last minute uh, kick to win. Uh, there was the final this year. What a final that was back in May. Leinster absolutely devastated in Dublin to lose to La Rochelle, deserved finalists. And the opening weekend throws up a rematch of that final. More on that in a little bit, because there's lots to discuss about this tournament. Oh, I've jumped ahead too much there. Uh, lots to talk about this tournament and um, I think the first thing I'll do is just talk about the format of it because there's, there's elements I like about this and elements I don't like. Um, if I can get to the right slide, there we go. So this is a general thing across rugby. Rugby tinkers far too much generally. You see this with the laws a lot. The, the powers that be trying to solve one problem in rugby and they end up causing two or three other problems that they hadn't anticipated. The law of unintended consequences, and I think they might have done it again here. So they've had another tinker with this competition, bearing in mind how prestigious and how rich the history has been in this competition. I think it's personally sacrilege to mess about with it to the extent that they have. It's just wrong. Um, I think I prefer this format to last year's. I just think they've messed about with it far too much. And as a result, I don't know how it feels where you are, but certainly in England, it does not feel like there's the kind of excitement you would expect for an opening weekend of a Champions Cup that there normally is. It feels like it's going to be a little bit boring. And then in the spring, when the quarter, uh, the last 16 and quarterfinals come around, then it will get really, really exciting. As for the pool stage, as you can see, the 24 sides have been split into four pools of six. That's uh, two sides in each pool from the URC, from the English Premiership, and from the French Top 14. And the way it works is the teams will play all of the teams that aren't in their own domestic competition. So in the case of Pool 1, Saracens and Bristol will play Bordeaux, the Bulls, Connacht and Lyon. And they will play those four sides either home or away. So they play them once, four games in total in the pool stage. And in Pool 4, for example, La Rochelle and Stade Francais, they're both from the top 14, so they don't play each other, but they will play Leicester and Sale from the Premiership and Stormers and Leinster from the URC. That, as I say, that, that has thrown up that amazing round one fixture between the champions La Rochelle and the beaten finalists from, uh, from last year's competition, Leinster. So, and this is the first problem I have. It's not, so, it's not such a big issue with the top 14 teams. There are eight fantastic French clubs in this tournament. I think the same goes for the URC as well. However, 
the English Premiership is in a bit of a pickle at the minute. It only has 10 teams because three of the teams have gone bust. And that means eight out of 10 of the current Premiership sides are in this tournament, which just dilutes the product. I know it's unavoidable because of the format and the way they want to structure it, but it just doesn't feel right that the team can finish in eighth in its tournament out of 10, third bottom, and it's in the Champions Cup just feels wrong and particularly with the English salary cap dipping quite a lot the quality of the premiership has gone down I don't know how well some of these English teams are going to compete but I, I guess we'll see and I, I hope that I'm wrong on that but I'm, I'm a bit I'm a bit dubious about that I, I kind of feel because what happens now is these 24 teams will go down to 16 teams that progress so only eight teams won't make it through to the next stage Four of those teams, the teams that finish fifth in the pool, will go to the Challenge Cup, the competition below, and the bottom side are out of the competition. So, basically, you, you have to be quite poor, relatively, not to make it through to the next stage, which is why I say I, I, I'm not as excited about these fixtures in the pool stage as you normally would be, because there just isn't as much riding on it. And, I don't know. That the, I, th I think the round of 16, the quarterfinal, the knockouts are going to be incredible. No, I, I don't know what the answer is. I'm not totally sure. I think it's better than last year, but it's not perfect. Um, as for the contenders, let's... let's uh, if I can <laughs> sort myself out here. Let's have a look at the, the contenders as I see it. Oh, yeah, just to highlight. So after the pool stage, it will go to a round of 16. This is last year's round of 16. And this stage was really, really exciting. Don't get me wrong. Um, so I'm very much looking forward to that, which will be coming in the spring. And I hope that the pool stages are exciting enough and that there is a bit of jeopardy. So the contenders, Leinster, no doubt. Jacques Nienaber has come in. What can he add to this Leinster team that have... Well, they'll feel like they've let themselves down. They... They had everything in their favour last year, except an injured Johnny Sexton, of course, um, for, for last season's running. But they were at home in Dublin. They had that home crowd. And they didn't win it. They didn't win the URC because they put all their eggs in the Champions Cup final basket. So rested players against Munster and lost the URC semi-final. And then they lost the final to La Rochelle the following week. So there's bitter pain. And only compounded for, bearing in mind, most of the Leinster team is the Irish team. Those poor Leinster fans have been put through the ringer because they also went through another quarterfinal defeat at the Rugby World Cup with Ireland. So can they bridge that gap? Can they Can they go? I think back to, I mentioned that Munster side of 2006, how much more it meant when they won it because of the near misses. It will mean so much to Leinster if they come through and win this one. Can they? They are, I think they'll be one of, I think they're one of the two clear favourites. The other favourite being the, the champions, La Rochelle who have just got a dynamite team and Ronan Agara, uh, a proud Munsterman, running the ship there and he's done it absolutely fantastically well. Can they go for another title? I mean, it, must, it gets harder every year. You want to back it up. You wouldn't put it past them though. They've got, uh, they haven't been doing that well in the top 14 in the league. There's been a bit of a World Cup hangover as all their internationals come back. Can they hit the ground running? Got a tough challenge against Leinster. Um, Toulouse. The other big French giant, the current top 14 champions, they are the, the the team that have, well, one of the winningest teams in this competition, just using an American word there. They've got so much history in this tournament and they were, they were beaten by Leinster in that semi-final in Dublin last year. I was there working on that game and um, that one would have stung for Toulouse. Um, but as it is, Leinster didn't get that fifth star, the fifth title. So Toulouse could still be the first side to get five Champions Cup titles. They'll be hoping to this year with all their superstars. Uh, Racing 92. I, I mean, we, we're getting we're getting out of the big favourites. And I think this is like you've got the, the top three, Leinster, La Rochelle, Toulouse. I think then you've got another band of clubs which which could go and do it. And Racing 92, star-studded lineup. Stuart Lancaster just in there as the boss. Can he bring about... Something there. He's got Sia Khaleesi as one of the leaders. Henry Arundel out on the wing. Um, lost Finn Russell, but no shortage of talent in that side. Racing 92, I think, were definite contenders. And I think of the English clubs, Saracens are best placed to do it. They've got a team stacked with England internationals. And this, it, the, the problem is, is the salary cap in England is meaning that they've got a much smaller squad or they've got 
that there are there's less depth in in the Saracens squad that we're used to. So a couple of injuries and it can start to unravel a bit for Saracens. And even when they come up against the really good teams who bring their their benches on, that could undo Saracens as well. But they are well placed to uh, to have a good good crack Saracens. So I think I think they'll represent the Premiership well. I put them in that second band of teams along with the Stormers. If you want to look to the South African sides, I think they're probably, I would say, best placed to compete. And it's, do you know what? I was a bit dubious about the South African sides joining this competition, just from that history and tradition point of view. But I really do think they've added um, an element to it. And I'm hoping that the, the crowds in South Africa, which seem like they're on the up and rising, um, it's going to take time for them to kind of buy into the tradition and the history of this tournament and build their own history and tradition. But it feels like that's starting to happen. And these matchups that we're seeing feel a bit special when you come up against these South African sides. There's, there's such iconic names in the game. So I think also in this second band of contenders, you've got Munster, you've got Toulon, uh, both former champions. You've got Bordeaux as well, I would say an outside chance. And the final point I'd, I'd have to make is the final is going to be, what is it, the end of May next year at the Tottenham Stadium, which I've, I've been to that stadium a few times to watch rugby games. And it is one of the best stadiums you will see. So um, that would be worth a visit. It is a, an incredible location for a final. So hopefully the game lives up to it. As for the fixtures for the opening weekend, let's have a little look at what we've got. And it has thrown up, I already mentioned, um, the, the big game is La Rochelle against Leinster. No question. That is the absolute standout fixture in, in, in the first weekend of games. And if you had to watch one match, it would be that one. The champions against the beaten finalists, the two favourites for the tournament, head-to-head, -head, round one. Doesn't get much better than that. I would also say, when I was looking at the fixtures, that um, Toulon v Exeter and Bath v Ulster, two matchups with teams that have both won this competition is quite good but this is where this is what i mean about the english competition toulon v exeter i think that's probably going to be a comfortable toulon win and in years gone by that would not be the case because the english salary cap has just taken a nosedive and it'll be hard for them to be as competitive bath meanwhile they've got quite a favorable set of fixtures i would say and they could get off to a win against ulster that is a big big match and then um, there's a couple of nice little South African flavoured ties. Bulls v Saracens has got a little bit of a ring to it, particularly with Saracens with all that history of South African players and South African investment. There's a There feels like there's a bit of spice in that one. And the same goes for Le Leicester versus the Stormers. Leicester Tigers with Andre Pollard and Jasper Visa, um, Hanro Liebenberg and guys like that. Some guys well known to South African audiences. That one just feels a bit meaty, that matchup. And quite a sexy game to finish. Racing 92 against Harlequins. Um, two stylish teams. The stash is on point. The, the support is amazing. And, uh, and that should be an absolute belter to round off the weekend. So I think I think on balance, I'm, 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 I'm pretty positive. I'm pretty excited. More so this year than in previous years. Still not perfect. I just, I, I'll just finish with that last question. What, how, how excited does it feel like people are? Because it hasn't ignited yet. I haven't heard anybody really talking about it. I think that will happen more so over the weekend. I think it might well be that the, the tournament really just kicks off when we get into the spring. I just hope these games in the pool stages are good. Let me know what you think. Thank you very much for watching. And like I say, if you want more club rugby chat on the channel, well, get behind this video. Give it a thumbs up. Tell your mates. Subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments. And I'll see you on the next one.